Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks so much for everybody joining us. We're excited to play in the Texas Bowl um, against a, a great opponent. Uh, just learned uh, a couple minutes ago that it's going to be LSU, so it's going to be exciting for our guys. Uh, we're practicing this afternoon, and uh, they knew it was the Texas Bowl before we started practice, but um, didn't know uh, the opponent. So I'll be excited uh, uh, to talk to the guys as, as we finish up practice and gives us an opportunity to play a great opponent, gives us an opportunity to continue to grow with our with our developmental guys. And then uh, obviously I'm really excited for a bunch of seniors to get uh, uh, one more opportunity to play together uh, down in Houston. So with that, we'll open it up for questions. Okay, we'll start here with B. Scott Pritchin. You're muted, Scott, hold on a second. I gotta remember how to do this. There we go. Okay, uh, congratulations, Chris. I, I know that um, this is uh, different than the end of last year. You, you have talked uh, about almost after every game about the story, about the story of the season. Could you um, briefly describe just what the story has been to this point for this 2021 team? Yeah, um, it's got one more chapter, that's for sure, and an exciting chapter. And um, we knew the, the stories. It's uh, it's a long story, and, and you're going to have some bumps in the road. And we had our leadership meeting today. And uh, the last time we had a leadership council meeting, we were 3-3 three and three and 0-3 and in the league. And I challenge those guys to – uh, have an impact, challenge uh, each other to be accountable. And uh, lo and behold, that um, you know, we got it to seven wins. And, and although we're disappointed that we lost the last two games, um, I, I'm a firm believer that uh, you're not judged by a moment, but you're judged by an entire body of work. And so we have one more opportunity uh, with these seniors to, to truly finish the story. And uh, I know our guys are excited about that. And um, we're going to get after it with our prep and, and hopefully play a really good game. Thank you. Go ahead, Kellis. Okay. Uh, hey, Coach, congrats on the bowl invite. Um, can you walk me through a little bit about your decision to make a change at offensive coordinator this week? Um, you know, it, uh, it's something that uh, – uh, I thought long and hard about and uh, took a week uh, myself after the game. And uh, I didn't want to make any uh, quick decisions. Um, but, you know, I uh, thought about it long and hard, was on the road for all last week, which probably helped me get away and clear my mind and, and decide on what's the best thing for Kansas State University. And uh, uh, came back and, and had a conversation with, with Gene. And uh, it was it was my decision um, that I thought we needed to um, – make a change that was very, very difficult as, as you can imagine, as, as close as Coach Mess and I are. Uh, but uh, uh, I came here three years ago uh, to uh, uh, get a program ready to, to go compete for a Big 12 championship. And this is not about Chris Kleiman. It's not about Courtney Messingham. It's about Kansas State football. And uh, I felt uh, we needed to make a change. And um, uh, so we did. Um, and what, what kind of excitement level do you have to see what kind of game plan Colin can put together in that interim role? Well, I, I'm excited for, for Colin and the offensive staff, but I, I know we're not going to reinvent the wheel in three weeks. And I don't want him to think uh, I'm judged solely on what happens here in this uh, three week prep and, and one game. And uh, so for me, it's more the leadership, the organization, um, how he interacts with the coaches, players. I, I'm going to kind of uh, be a fly on the wall a lot with those offensive coaches to, to see, um, you know, the, the plan that they come up with. And uh, uh, I, I know that uh, we had a meeting this morning with the offensive staff. They're excited about the challenge and we didn't know the opponent, didn't know where we were playing. So we'll be on the road this week again, and then we'll start that preparation next weekend. And uh, do, it, is your expectation for Skyler to be the guy in this game? Yeah, uh, we, we have, you know, we haven't, we're practicing young guys this weekend. I don't think Skyler would be able to practice if we practice today. So uh, we'll have everybody ready. And I don't know if that, you know, if that's going to be Will and Jaron and Jake uh, who are practicing this weekend uh, or by next weekend, if Skyler, I'll have to give you uh, an update at another time, but uh, uh, everybody all hands on deck this week with the quarterback position or this game. 
and, and one more and then I'll, I'll shut up. But just what, what are your general thoughts on playing a, a program like LSU that has so much history? Yeah, um, not far removed from a national championship and uh, uh, so much prestige and, and history behind LSU football. Um, and it's, it excites me. I know it's going to excite our staff and, and our team to be able to play uh, a high caliber SEC uh, team that uh, everybody's talked about, heard about, and it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be a big challenge because they, they have tremendous players and uh, I know they have a, a coaching change going on, but uh, um, they got a bunch of kids that have a lot of pride and, and want to finish out with a win just like we do. All right, go again, D. Scott. Yeah, uh, you have those four core values uh, up on the scoreboard, and I know they're very important to you. Uh, can you just speak briefly about how maybe each of those directed the path of this team this season? Because I understand it's the tightest group that you guys have had. Yeah, it really is. And, uh, you know, discipline, commitment, toughness, and to be selfless. And uh, our guys have been really disciplined throughout the year. We haven't had um, troubles uh, off the field, and guys have uh, challenge each other on the field and uh, discipline to come to work every day, uh, committed uh, to be committed to your teammate, to be committed to your brother, to be committed to K-State football, I think is important. Toughness, you know, you play seven games in a row after our bye week or like we did, uh, and that's that's a grind. And uh, we have a lot of guys that fought through a lot of injuries. We got some guys playing that were really banged up, just like everybody else in the country, but I just know how, how tough those guys are. Uh, have been and then to be selfless and 18 to 22 year olds that's tough to ask uh, but uh, uh, a lot of selfless acts of guys changing positions and and moving around different spots so that uh, we could put the best outfit out there we could every Saturday and uh, we've got a tremendous locker room uh, really close-knit group of guys and I know they're excited to, to be together for another month. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, if you want to ask a question, just use the raise hand function. Let's go to Sully. Uh, hey, Coach. You know, obviously, I know you're very familiar with postseason football, but, you know, what, is there something that you learned from the preparation for the Liberty Bowl last time around or something you want to take into this kind of preparation going into this game, which is also like, you know, the last college uh, football game for the national championship? Yeah, uh, I'm going to go back and look at my notes on it, Sully. Uh, obviously, we didn't uh, uh, have success and win the game. It was a tight tight battle with Navy. It was also the triple option, which made it even more difficult, but I'll go back and look at my notes. I, I just, I know how unique and special bowl games are in, in postseason football, especially for seniors that are getting their last opportunity to play and uh, at least play for K-State. And so um, it, it's our job as coaches to make sure that we come up with terrific game plans so that those guys can just cut it loose and play. And so uh, I'm excited about uh, uh, spending a month with these guys and yeah, we'll probably tweak some things from what we did just because it's my second opportunity to bowl game. And I've played in plenty of games in January, um, but we've probably played four games through December where this week, this year we haven't played any. Go next to Fitz. Hey, Coach. Um, I, I'm curious, you, you named Colin the uh, interim offensive coordinator. What are you going to do with the two vacant position groups for the bowl game? Yeah, good question, uh, Fitz. Um, Brian LaPack is going to handle the tight ends and fullbacks. Um, and uh, I'm excited. Brian's a, a quality control for us, so we've elevated him. And then um, I'm going to combination the wide receivers. Christian Ellsworth is a graduate assistant for us that I just think the absolute world of and helped out Coach Mess. And, and Christian knows our offense, knows our talent level, knows our personnel, is a, is a great communicator. So he'll handle the wide receivers, uh, but we'll also elevate Will Burnham and, and Will will help us at the wide receiver spot as well as on special teams. So the two guys that kind of get elevated and moved up are, are Will Burnham and Brian LaPack, but uh, a lot more um, coaching responsibilities as well for Christian Ellsworth. So I'm excited for all those guys to have that challenge. And, and those two analysts are on now on the road recruiting, correct? Um, correct. They, that's we okay. just elevated those guys this weekend. You bet. Thank you, coach. Yep. Let's go back to Kellis. Yeah. One more for you, Chris. You said you're already practicing. The game isn't until all the way until January 4th. How are you going to handle uh, all that over the next month? Well, the biggest advantage from a bull prep standpoint is, is uh, development and younger guys. And that's what we did 
to yesterday and today is more young guys practice um, and give those guys just our base offense, base defense, and let those guys play football as well as technique, fundamentals, uh, a lot of special teams drills. And we'll, since we're on the road all this week, a lot of the behind the scenes people will probably break down some LSU film. But uh, when we come back next, next weekend to have a couple more practices, we'll do mostly just K-State versus K-State because we'll have not had a chance as coaches to really dive into game plans. Uh, but that's still a great opportunity for these young guys to just play football and keep getting better at their craft, um, keep developing guys. We've got a lot of good young, young talent here that's been on the scout team. So we need to get, we need to spend a lot of time with those guys. And so that's going to happen over the next uh, week. And then by the end of next weekend is when we'll start diving into some LSU film. And uh, what, what was a, uh the team's response when they, they had Colin out there, the, the first practice is, I guess, the, the interim OC. Did they have any well, it, reaction? It, yeah. Um, I know people are, are excited for Colin. The amount of respect that, that Colin Klein has within uh, our program with the history of Kansas state. Uh, uh, I know they're really, really excited for him. Once again, we're practicing mostly the young guys and the older guys are with coach true uh, going through some lifting and some running and stuff. So it's mostly young guys, but it's really practice as normal right now. We haven't tweaked anything. We might do that. But once again, we're, we're in a recruiting mode right now. So uh, we're keeping the practice as we, as it would be a spring practice or a fall camp practice. Thanks, Chris. You bet. Let's go to Arnie. Yeah, Chris, I was wondering about uh, with, uh, you lost some depth at running back in the last couple of weeks. What, uh, What's that going to look like now be behind news? Yeah, we, we've got some young kids, um, you know, in uh, DJ Giddens and Devron Withers, um, Jordan Shippers, uh, CJ Price, uh, that gonna, are going to get an opportunity. And um, uh, that's fun for those guys because they're going to get a chance to, to run with the, the, the top guys and, and uh, we can get a great uh, gauge and evaluation on those guys. I, they all have ability and, uh, uh, we'll find out who becomes the the guy or guys that are going to either spell Deuce or or complement uh, Deuce, and so you know we we still have number twenty two back there, and, and and we all know he's pretty special. And does the fact that you're you're going to be developing some of these younger guys at that position does it help then have the longer the longer preparation period with the January four game? Yeah, um, we, we've got to look at the calendar and how we're going to lay that out and, and with Christmas and stuff. But in essence, we were going to have this time, whether or not we played earlier and just played right through or let them go home for a handful of days at Christmas and then bring them back and start it over. But I, it's for everybody, this development time. I, I'm excited because we get a couple more weeks in the weight room with Coach True and we're making great strides and great gains with a lot of younger players. And then you get to have those kids practice. And that's what's, they, they love to be coached. They love to have the reps and not just be working off of a scout team card, which they've done for about 12 weeks. And so uh, that's the exciting thing for all those guys is to get a chance to, to just play football and not have to worry about reading a card and, and just continuing to learn. Thanks. Anything else? All right, coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. Talk to everybody soon. Just a reminder to everybody we'll have